Hey y'all, I'm Lisa and welcome to Our Great House. Today I'm bringing you five budget-friendly DIYs because they're all under five dollars. So let's get a high five for that. And there's kept in the corner. Anyways, if this is part of a playlist, I'm going to tell you more about that in a little bit. But first, I'm going to start crafting. DIY number one. I have painted the bottom half of this birdhouse with Rust-Oleum's chalk ultramatte paint in the color linen. And now I'm painting the top of it with Rust-Oleum's chalk ultramatte paint in the color charcoal. I did go back in with that linen color to touch up a few spots that I noticed that I hadn't painted. To finish out this birdhouse, I'm just going to use a sand block that I got from the Dollar Tree to distress it just a little bit on the edges. And then I'm also going to take some distress ink and use my little dabber tool and add it to the corners and just, just kind of to the edges basically. This is how the birdhouse DIY turned out, and I think it turned out cute. The total for this project was around, I mean generously, I'm saying around $2. It was $1 for the birdhouse at Dollar Tree, and I already had the paint on hand and the distressing ink on hand. So I'll just say it was a dollar for those supplies, making it $2 total. As I mentioned earlier, this is part of a playlist, and it's hosted by Missy from Crafty Cove DIY. Emily from Farm Charm Chic and the guest host this week or this month is Shannon from Shannon's Crafty DIYs. DIY number two. I am going to be making a cutting board and this was inspired from Holly at Hot Humble Pie and I'll leave a link to the description in the description box below to her project and how she did it. So I made this template. Mine's a little bit larger than the one she did. I made this template and I'll have a link to a free printable for you guys as well if you want to try to recreate this project. And I just cut it out of two of them out of cardboard. I did use my silicone tool to try to spread it around a little bit better. I just don't find it that easy to manipulate and spread around. So maybe that's why I don't like it. I'm not sure. But anyway, you're just going to glue those two pieces of cardboard together and that's going to make it a thicker piece of cardboard. I did also need to make a hole in the center so I had to use several different tools because it kept trying to, when I was using the screwdriver it was just like bending the cardboard too much and it wasn't going through so I had to use some sharp scissors and anyway I eventually made the hole so it's fine. Now it's time to apply the spackle which is the fun part of it and I'm just using this little piece of cardboard that I had left over and I'm using it as my spreader and I'm trying to not put it on too thickly but thickly enough thick enough to cover up like the ridges of the cardboard I don't know I'm not sure how it's turning out at this point I know I was thinking to myself this is not looking like Holly's was looking I don't know what I'm doing differently because when I was watching Holly's video, she used a hair dryer to speed up the drying process so that she could continue with the craft. And here you see I'm using my heat tool and y'all, it was not, <laughs> it was not drying. I guess maybe I applied it too thickly. Maybe I should have done like thinner coats and built it up. I'm not sure. I'll probably have to ask Holly her opinion of how that turned out. After I let it dry overnight, I just took that Dollar Tree sanding block and started sanding it down. Here's how it's looking so far, and I am pleased with the texture because it does look like wood, but you'll notice that some of my sanding has exposed the cardboard underneath, but I'm okay with it because I'm going to distress it in just a second. So I cut out a decal, letter H, using my Cricut, and at first I thought I was going to create like a wreath using this little wire leaf stuff that I have on hand. But I decided to start distressing it first. And again, that's why I wasn't worried about where that cardboard was showing through because I knew I could just put some distressing ink on it and it would just help it look aged. I'm just using this little dauber tool. I got that from Hobby Lobby and dipping it into the, or it's like, actually the distressing ink is not, it's like a stamp pad, 
So I'm just dabbing it on the stamp pad and then kind of going around the edges where I think it would have a naturally worn look to it. And now it's time to put the decal on. The letter H stands for my last name. So just peeling that back and I'm gonna apply, I was kind of worried about how it would apply to that spackle, but it ended up applying really well. Now I'm just trying to figure out if I'm gonna make this wreath around the H and I lay it down and I think it's just, it just feels like a bit much. Like it's kind of taking away from the cutting board. It's, I don't feel like it's adding to it so I decide not to put it on. Instead, I'm gonna go with a buffalo check, just a little bow, really. I thought I was gonna use some twine with it. Captain's of course very interested in the whole process when it involves ribbon or twine. I then think to add a little bit of twine right around the handle because I just think it'll give it a, I don't know. I just thought it looked cute with it wrapped around the handle. Now it's time to finish this project up. I'm gonna add the bow to it, being careful not to burn myself. <laughs> and then I'll just trim off the ends. This is how the cutting board DIY turned out and I think it turned out cute as well. It's hard for me to determine the total for the project because the cardboard was just scrap cardboard. I had the spackle, I had the ribbon, I had the twine, and I have a Cricut. But let's just say, I mean for kicks and grins, you could say it cost me three dollars. Maybe two. I don't know. You tell me. DIY number three. For this project I'm just taking one of those thick circles that you can find at Dollar Tree and I'm just using Waverly Wax in the color Antique to stain it. Now that the circle is dry, I'm going to be applying these wood half rounds, wood half rounds, wood half beads, half round wood beads, not sure. <laughs> anyway, we're going to be applying them around the perimeter of the circle. The beads don't fit perfectly, so you do have to kind of space, it, space them out just a little bit so that they will all fit around and look nice. And I'm taking this little wood piece. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but I got it from Hobby Lobby and I'm going to apply that to the center to be my stand for this little tiered stand stand. Once that's all dry, I'm going back in with that Waverly Wax in the color Antique and I'm staining the little piece that I put on the bottom and I'll also stain the half wood beads around the perimeter of that circle. This little mini tiered stand turned out really adorable. And the total for the project, I'm gonna say, was a dollar for the round circle, and it was maybe a dollar for the beads, and less than a dollar for that bottom um, little piece that I put on for it to stand on. So let's just say, we're gonna call that $3 for that project. DIY number four. A while back, I had used the little label thing at the bottom of this frame. You can kind of see the two dots where the label used to be at the top of this frame right here, but I had used that for another DIY project. So I thought this would be perfect for this project. And I'm just staining it again using the Waverly Wax and the color Antique. While that's drying up, I'm using Rust-Oleum's Chalked Ultramat Paint in the color Linen to paint the, um, this part of the frame. It's it's the backing essentially that you normally wouldn't see because the picture would be there, but I'm gonna be using it a different way. I also decided to paint linen all the way around the outside of the frame. I'm gonna be using a ruler to create faux shiplap on this little backing of the photo frame. And I'm taking my distressing ink again and I'm just gonna go around some parts of the shiplap to kind of make it look like weathered shiplap. I'm not sure. I just, I kind of like the distressed look. Not too overly done, but I do like distressing a little bit to give it some more character. And I'm putting the frame back together because now I need to be able to see how much room I have to work with with what I'm going to create next. I was never able to find faux leather at Dollar Tree, so I had bought some faux leather at Hobby Lobby, and I cut off just a little slice of it because I'm taking that greenery that I was gonna make 
a wreath for in the previous project and I'm going to make a little smaller wreath for this project. And I'm just going to lay it down on the frame, but I'm going to use that little faux leather piece as kind of a hanger. But first, I need like a thumbtack or something to be the, um, I don't know what, what, I'm, what I'm looking for, but anyway, I just used a thumbtack. I painted it black and that's going to become like my nail head, if you will. So I'm taking that faux piece of leather and looping it around the little wreath and then I'm very carefully hot gluing that together. And then I'm going to glue that to the picture frame. I'm going to add the little thumbtack to the top to kind of finish it out. I really love the details on this DIY and I'm going to say it cost me around $3. I did already have all the items on hand, but the frame was a dollar from Dollar Tree and it, I did have the, the rest of the supplies on hand, but let's just estimate that I used about $3 worth of supplies total. Unless you have a different idea, let me know in the comments. DIY number five. Our final project, y'all. I'm taking this wood round. It's just a thin piece of wood. I can't remember where I got it from, possibly Hobby Lobby. And I'm just using the Rust-Oleum Chalked Ultra Matte Paint in the color Charcoal to give it a good coat of paint. I had another wood circle. It's also a thin piece of wood as well. And I had stained it with that Waverly Wax in the color Antique. And now I'm just going to, as you'll notice, I didn't paint the back side of the black one because you're not gonna see it. I'm gonna glue it to the center of that stained piece, the stained circle. And now I'm applying a decal. It does say blessed. I'm blessed to have y'all here watching me on my channel. And I really do appreciate you guys being here. But I'm just applying this decal. I cut it out using my Cricut. And once I have that on, now it's time to glue the black circle to the stained circle. And I'm just using my hot gun. My hot gun? My glue gun. <laughs> And to finish it out, I am just going to be making a little simple bow using Buffalo Check Ribbon. And I think I got it from Hobby Lobby. I'm also using it to cover up a hole because the stained piece of wood actually has a hole in it. I guess it was some sort of ornament maybe. I'm not sure. But it has a hole in the top like you're going to hang it. So I'm just making that little simple bow. It'll cover it up and kind of add a nice little touch to my project. This final DIY cost me about $2.50, maybe $3, let's say $3, because a dollar for that stained wood round, a dollar for the black wood round, and then let's say 50 cents for the word blessed because I used my Cricut, and 50 cents for the bow, even though, you know, it wasn't 50 cents. But let's just say $3 total, super budget-friendly DIY, and it looks really cute. Thank y'all so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate you allowing me to come into your space and share my crafts. You need to tell me in the comments below which one is your favorite. And don't forget, if you want to follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye!